Hello and welcome to HC Online. It is great to have you with us. My name is Steve Conacher. I'm a youth pastor on the team here at HT. And you are so welcome to this online service. Wherever you're joining, whether you're on the sofa, whether you've managed to find quiet space in your house, whether you're even braving the garden, well done if you are. Today on HT Online, there'll be the usual opportunity to worship and to pray together. And we're going to be wrapping up the series on living in the light of eternity, thinking about life beyond the grave. Uh, Ollie Benyon, Associate Vicar, is going to be speaking to us about new creation. It's a whole new world. And if you're racking your brain and thinking, I know that song, it comes from a film, it comes from Aladdin. Just wanted to help you out there before we start. Um, but before we go into the rest of our service, a few bits of news of things going on around HT. And the first thing to let you know is about the APCM, which is next Monday, the 10th of May, 7.30pm on Zoom. The APCM is an annual meeting for the whole church. It's kind of a slightly business-like meeting, um, which involves things like electing the church council and updates and end of year stuff. And if you consider HT your home, your church, then you are so welcome to join that. Please sign up online. Uh, that's next Monday, 7.30 p.m. on Zoom. And secondly, in two weeks time, in the week beginning the 17th of May, which is the day after my birthday, you are invited to join in a week of prayer, which is called Thy Kingdom Come. Thy Kingdom Come is something that HT has taken part in for a few years now. And it's not just a, an HT initiative, it's something started by the Archbishop of Canterbury and the Archbishop of York to invite the whole church across the nation and I think across the world to pray and specifically to pray that people would connect with God, would find faith for themselves. This year there's going to be several ways that you can join in with Thy Kingdom Come through HT. There are going to be morning reflections available online kind of 10 minute short reflections on a, on a bit of the Bible and leading you through prayer. That's every morning, Monday to Friday. There's going to be lunchtime worship on those days as well, led by Esther Jane, um, which you could tune into during your work, lunch break or something like that. And then on the Saturday evening, there's going to be a chance to come into the building, into HT to worship and pray together on site. So to keep up with all those events, please do check in with the website. That's the week beginning the 17th of May, all the way leading up to Sunday the 23rd, which is Pentecost. Now, we are going to begin our service with a chance to worship God in song, led by Esther Jane and the band. And to prepare ourselves to connect with God this morning, I think it's, it's difficult when you're watching church from home. When you don't have the, the physicality of the space of the building and being able to see other people around you. So I'm going to encourage us to kind of do something a little bit physical to engage our bodies to prepare um, to, to worship God. So we're going to do a simple thing. Hands down, hands up. Start with hands down, kind of giving the stuff on our minds, our hopes, our fears, our worries, or whatever it might be. Giving them to God as we begin. And then we're going to turn our hands up and ask for God to give us whatever God wants to give us today. So let's do that together. Father, we welcome you into this time. And we begin with our hands down. Lord, as a sign that we come to you and we lay at your feet, as it were, all the stuff that's on our minds. Our worries, our distractions, the things you're excited about, we just lay them at your feet now. And as we turn our hands up, Father, we ask you, we invite you, we long that you would give us today whatever you want to give us. That you would help us to hear whatever you want us to hear from this service that you would speak to us and that you would connect us with yourself. Come Holy Spirit today we pray. In Jesus name, Amen. Let's worship God together.
of covenants and faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you just what you said. Oh, the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast and let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness.
rising sun to the setting same I will praise your name great is your faithfulness to me so I put my faith in Jesus my anchor to the God he's my hope
Lord, this morning we praise you for your faithfulness. We thank you, Jesus, that you are the rock of ages. That yesterday, today, and forevermore, you are the same. And we thank you for your faithfulness to us. And Lord, in this um, new season, as we come out of lockdown, we thank you that you will continue to be faithful to us. We give you praise and thanks this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, in a moment, Ollie is going to speak to us, but first we're going to have our reading. This morning's reading is taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verses 1 to 5. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down for these words are trustworthy and true. Good morning friends, my name is Ollie Benyon, I'm one of the associate vicars here and it's a, a joy to be able to share with you today. Um, over the last month or so we've been looking at a, going through a mini-series entitled Living in Light of Eternity and we've been looking at a number of themes such as um, uh, resurrection, uh, judgment, uh, last week Stuart spoke on rewards and today we're looking at new creation uh, on the subject of, of heaven. And um, I don't know what you imagine when you close your eyes, when you think of heaven. Um, maybe you're too preoccupied with just getting through today and thinking about uh, a future hope tomorrow. Or maybe uh, you, you, you don't think we can even imagine such a place. And the book entitled Heaven by a guy called Randy Orkhorn, um, he tells a story of a pastor coming to speak to him and challenging him on if it was even possible to write a book about heaven, quoting uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 9. He says, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Surely we can't know what God has prepared for us but Orkhan reminds us that of the verse that comes straight after that. And it says this, but God has revealed it to us by his spirit. When we read God's word, uh, it fuels our imagination of what Jesus has prepared for us. And this is why Paul uh, de uh, declares in Colossians 3, 1 to 2, set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. So that is what we're going to do. Let me pray for us as we start. Lord, we just welcome you to meet with us today. Help us to set our, our minds and our hearts on things above, and that you would give us an an just a, an excitement and enthusiasm for what is in store for us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit today. In your mighty name, amen. So for uh, Christians who believe in Jesus and, uh, uh, and believe in heaven, we're gonna, they, they know they're going to spend quite a lot of time in this place. It would be good for us to imagine what, we are, what we're striving for. I want to read uh, you a quote from a kid's book entitled What is Heaven by Maria Shiva, who was once married to the great Arnold Schwarzenegger. And uh, in her, her book, she says this, Heaven is somewhere you believe in. It is a beautiful place where you can sit 
on soft clouds and talk to other people who are there. At night, you can sit next to the stars, which are the brightest of anywhere in the universe. If you're good throughout your life, then you can go to heaven when your life is finished here on earth. God sends angels down from heaven to take you up to heaven with him. And it goes on. Grandma is in the safest place with the stars, with God and the angels. She is watching over us from up there. And this book has a, a 4.5 star rating on Amazon and is full of reviews from very grateful parents uh, who've been able to communicate a little bit about heaven to their kids. One of them says, wow, what an awesome message. This book has helped me teach my little boy about heaven. Now, we may roll our eyes, shrug, laugh about such a, a view of heaven, but like me, you may have picked up on the way, images of what our future glory may be like that just don't appear in the Bible. Maybe a picture of disembodied souls floating on clouds, caught up into eternal church service that's singing, you know, here I am to worship on eternal loop. Even in the best service where the preacher is engaging and the, uh, the, the worship leader is singing every single one of the songs that I like, um, you know, I know after 90 minutes or so, I'm wondering and uh, I'm hungry and thinking about lunch. You expand that to all eternity and you know, I'm not that excited. If you have that view of heaven, then, then I'm sure you're not that thrilled about the prospect either. Well, thankfully, this is not a biblical view of heaven. So what I'm wanting to do this morning is to help us uh, lift up our gaze and imagine our, our future home. And by the mere process of setting our gaze on heaven, that we prayerfully begin to, to pull God's future into the present. So what does the future hold? What will heaven be like? Well, it says in verse 1 in, our, in chapter 21 of uh, Revelation, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. We see a picture of creation reborn. When was the last time you said, wow, this is new? I don't mean the, you know, the, the wonderful discovery of, uh, of putting anchovies in tomato sauce that makes an incredible meal for spaghetti or, 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 the, or a new car. I don't mean those kind of things. I mean uh, a major life experience. Now, when you say everything is going to be different now, this is a whole new world opening up. Now, normally these happen around uh, major life events. You know, when a baby is born, you know, your life changes in a moment and uh, uh, you, you have to, you, you live very differently from that moment onwards. Um, or, or at a wedding, I, I was officiating at a wedding yesterday and the couple, off they made their vows, they're, they're starting a new life together. It is going to look different from then on. If you've been battling with a dangerous long-term illness and then you recover, there's this new life that you get to step into and start living out. Or someone new comes to live with you. Um, yeah, six weeks ago, we welcomed our worship pastor Esther Jane to come and bubble with us and um, after months of being you know, just one family this has been something new I must admit it has been wonderfully new and we very much appreciate you Esther Jane but now there are now five girls in my in my house which is quite a quite a lot and so um Pray for me. The reason I'm telling you this is all these images are used uh, by John to describe the picture of a new heaven and a new earth. Verse 7, we didn't actually read that in our passage, but it's a couple of verses later. I will be their God and they will be my children. This is a picture of the final new birth that awaits us all. In verse 2, I saw the holy city of Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. It's a picture of this, of a wedding. Uh, in verse uh, 4b, there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. 
This is a picture of the great recovery from the, the suffering and pain that is caused by sin. And at the center of this whole picture that gives meaning to it all is this great promise that we can hold on to. Verse 3, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people. God will become the new and permanent resident with us. Now, there is often a danger when we use trivial examples to describe um, heaven. But we are, I think, to see them as signposts to our, our new kind of future, eternal future. And John is saying it's going to be like this. It's going to be like these things, but much, much more. And that is because our future heaven is not uh, about us going to heaven, as we may imagine, or even heaven coming to earth. But the image we get throughout scripture is both heaven and earth joining together to make something new. Revelation 21 verse 5, I am making everything new. And that, that's a picture of not just earth new, but everything. Heaven is new as well. This image of a new heaven and a new earth is picked up throughout the Bible in Isaiah. It's also picked up um, by Peter who speaks of the day of the Lord as a mighty fire that will bring destruction of the heavens and melt the earth and create a new heaven and a new earth. And in our, in our passage today, John says in verse 1, uh, first, uh, says the first heaven and the first earth will pa has passed away. So these are all future events of this new creation. So clearly heaven and earth operate in a, in a very different way than they do um, in the future. And I've not got time to go into how they operate now, but only to say that currently heaven can be thought as, as an entirely separate universe with its own time and its own space. And, uh, and though is able to, to touch earth. Uh, when we pray the Lord's Prayer, uh, you know, your kingdom come on earth as in heaven. We are asking for heaven to touch earth. And though we know that doesn't happen all the time, does it? We know that, that suffering and death still exist, but that will all change when Jesus returns. We have a glimpse of what it's going to be like now, but it will all change when Jesus returns. We welcomed um, Simon Ponsonby to come and speak a, a few weeks ago at Good Friday. And um, if you didn't hear it, Simon, then I recommend that you go and listen to his talks on the cross. They were some of the best uh, short reflections on the cross I've, I've heard. And I just encourage you to, to look and listen to those. And in one of Simon's book, The, the Lamb Wins, uh, he says this about the new heaven and the new earth. He says this, at the time, um, at the end of time, heaven will join earth and a whole new united, perfected universe will be established. The way that scripture holds these two together leads me to believe not so much in a distinct heaven and a distinct earth, but a new order in which the old order of separation is removed and heaven and earth are fused into one. A heaven on earth, a heaven that is earth. Now this is the image of heaven that we are to, to imagine. Not one where you sit on a soft cloud speaking to the stars, uh, but familiar and tangible. Things we can touch, where uh, new creation that we can, we can enjoy. That is why Martin Luther said that if he knew that that the Lord would return tomorrow, he would plant a tree today. Because heaven will be familiar. It is not like a complete uh, destruction of what we've known before. It will be familiar. But there will be significant difference. There will be no more sin. Uh, no more sin. The effects of sin has led us to being separated from God. Um, in the first garden, there was 
there was no separation. Adam and Eve got to walk with God uh, in the cool of the days, it says in Genesis 3. But it was the fall of Adam and Eve that led to created or creative um, order to be, start unraveling and Adam and Eve to be banished from the garden. Since that point, all of creation has been estranged. And uh, this, this image is beautifully uh, picked up in, by Paul in, uh, in Romans 8 when he talks about how the whole of creation has been groaning uh, as in the pains of childbirth. In childbirth, there is this, this joy and excitement of the imminent arrival of the baby. But it, but it runs alongside this, this agony of labor. And Paul adds that we who have the first fruits of the Spirit, you know, we, we know Jesus in our lives, we know the Spirit at work in our lives, but we also groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for the redemption of our bodies, that sin is destroyed in our bodies. The story of Genesis 3 onwards is all about redemption that finds its climactic moment in the life, death and resurrection of Jesus. Sin, which led to disconnection from God, is dealt with ultimately on the cross. And at the center of, of this, uh, this story, we find heaven and earth, God and humanity embracing on the cross. But full reconciliation comes when Jesus returns and the curse of sin and death is lifted. As Romans 8.21 says, uh, creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought to the freedom and glory of the children of God. And at the final chapter in Revelation 22, just a page over we're looking at, we see a picture of this new freedom in the restored garden that awaits us once again. I'm going to read it to you. Verse 3 of chapter 22. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and, um, and of the Lamb will be in the city and his servants will serve him. They will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the, la the light of a lamp or the light of the sun. For the Lord God will give them light and they will reign forever and ever. This is a picture uh, an image, of, a foretaste of, of heaven, what it will look, this new creation will look like. You know, we heard a few weeks ago, hell is marked by weeping and gnashing of teeth, but no one weeps in heaven. God will wipe every tear away from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away, as it says in verse four. Let's add to this list. There'll be no more brain tumors or heart attacks, no more strokes or failing eyes or arthritis, no more depression or cancer or, or COVID. There's more than that. There'll be no more accidents, no more terrorist attacks, no more spiteful neighbors or, or wars, no more rebellion, defiance, no more gossip, no more lies. There'll be no more deceit, no more discouragement, no more disappointments, no more dissatisfaction, no more worries. There'll be no more of, of any kind whatsoever. Can you hardly wait for that to be a reality? This past year has left so many people haunted by the tears and pain. At our weekly prayer meetings, we've been praying for those who have lost loved ones over this past year, maybe haven't been able to grieve properly, be with family properly. And, and there, are, there are many within our church community, I was really surprised how many who are going through this pain at this moment that as a consequence of, of sin, still having control over, over death and pain and suffering. But as Thomas More famously said, earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Just imagine a life without the effects of sin. No more death, no more grief, no more crying or pain, no curse, no night. 
So let us lift up our gaze and start to think, dream, and cling our hope on to, to heaven. So what is our response? Uh, such, a, such a hope, such a heaven must have an impact on our lives. It can't just, uh, just go by us. Well, C.S. Lewis suggests that those throughout history that have had the most impact on the present are those who've, who've thought most about the, the next time, the future. He said this, the apostles themselves who set on foot the conversion of the Roman Empire, the great men who built up the Middle Ages, the English evangelicals who abolished the slave trade, all left their mark on earth precisely because their minds were occupied with heaven. It is since Christ's Christians have largely ceased to think of the other world that they have become so ineffective in this. Aim at heaven and you'll get earth thrown in. Aim at earth and you'll get neither. So let us aim at heaven. I, and I just want to leave us with four very quick ways we can do that. We worship. We've got to worship. Let us worship. When we worship, we recognize that Jesus is our Lord and King. We take up our own crown and we say, you are my King, Lord. Um, when we share communion together, when we're together in, uh, in, in the building, we say these words, with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of thanks and praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. You know, we have been made to worship our King. So let us worship the great Saviour and Redeemer, Jesus, who has opened up the heavens for us. Secondly, is to proclaim this hope, this great hope that we have. This past month, we've been looking at this theme of living in light of eternity. And if you take anything from this series, then take this. Jesus has made a way for us to have a future hope that will not spoil or perish or fade. A hope that is free from the destructive nature of sin. And the world is longing for this, this hope, this news, this good news. And we have hope to offer. So let us live our lives with a, the desperation to share this hope which is available to all as long as we have breath in our lungs to say Jesus is Lord. Thirdly, to refuse to live as the world lives. Stuart was mentioning this last week, uh, challenging us not to build bigger and better barns to fill up uh, worldly things because we know that eventually all these things will be burnt up, but instead investing in a far greater reward in heaven. And finally, let us rejoice and draw strength and courage and peace, no matter our circumstances, knowing that whatever the world throws at us, however good or however bad, the best is yet to come. I just want to finish with a, um, a little bit extract from C.S. Lewis's The Last Battle. And um, Aslan, the, the Christ fig uh, figure, has triumphed over evil. But Lucy, she looks sad and says, to, Aslan says to her, you do not yet look as happy as I mean you to be. Lucy replies, we're so afraid of being sent away. Aslan answers, no fear of that. The term is over. The holidays have begun. The dream is ended. This is the morning. And then C.S. Lewis finishes, and we can most truly say that they all lived happily ever after. But for them, it was only the beginning of the real story, which goes on forever, in which every chapter is better than the one before. I want to remind us that our, our, our future is certain. So let us lift our gaze to heaven to worship the Lord, proclaim this great hope that we have, to refuse to live as the world lives and to learn to be a people that rejoice in this hope and draw strength from it for our future um, hope in heaven. Let me just pray for us as we end. Lord God, we are so grateful for this future hope that we can have certainty in. 
And for those of us here who maybe have not put the hope in you, um, I just, uh, Lord, help them to make that step to say yes to you, to say yes for you to be their Lord and Saviour. And if that is you, then do, do encourage you to come and speak to one of us and the team and get in touch. We'd love to be able to connect with you and speak to you more about that. But Lord, I just pray so also for, for those who already know you, that you would help us to lift our gaze and to, to live our days with an eternal hope. And uh, that will to impact every part of our lives. In your name. Amen. We're now going to continue in a time of prayer. Good morning. We're going to spend a few minutes in prayer, praying for the world, our country, our city and ourselves. We will end each section with the words, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. After each section, we will have a moment of quiet where you can bring the things on your heart to the Lord. We will now pray for the world. Heavenly Father, we thank you that so many have been able to receive the vaccine around the world and for the new freedoms that have come to the parts where the pandemic has abated. But Lord, we do pray for the other places in the world, particularly India, where there is much suffering due to the coronavirus pandemic. Loving Father, we pray that you would bring hope, healing and relief to those affected by this disease. Dear Lord, that we, we ask that you would bring stability to those places that are struggling with political uncertainty. We particularly pray this morning for Myanmar, for Hong Kong and for Afghanistan. Thank you, Lord, for the work that you are doing in building your church in these countries. And we pray for your servants living there. Please protect and enable them as they shine your light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We will now pray for our country. Dear Lord, thank you for the easing of lockdown restrictions. Lord, we remember and pray for those who continue to feel isolated and lonely. Father, we ask that you would comfort them and open the eyes and hearts of those around them to respond. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are worried about the future, particularly those without homes or jobs and those struggling with mental ill health. Please, Lord, encourage and bless them with your hope and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We will now pray for our city. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that so many undergraduates have had to return to the university campus this term. We pray for them, Lord, and ask for their safety. Please help those in our church, youth, and student ministries who are facing exams this term. May they find peace in you. Thank you for the wonderful peace that you can give the troubled heart. Heavenly Father, we pray for the Alpha Course that has just started at Holy Trinity. We pray that the truth and power of your gospel will change hearts in all those involved. Lord, we long for all in this city to know your life-giving power to change us from the inside out making all things new. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We will now pray for ourselves. Thank you, Lord, for new opportunities of being able to see each other. Please help us to be an encouragement to those around us. Father, we pray for those close to us who need a special touch from you today, Lord. Please heal those of us who are sick Please encourage those of us who are downcast. Please give peace to those of us who are anxious and worried. We pray that you would fill each one of us with your Holy Spirit and by your power, each of us would be salt and light to those around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, Father accept these, these prayers, prayers for, for the, the sake, sake of, of your, your Son, Son Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. In a moment, we are going to have a final song to end our service. But before we do, I want to give us a, a chance to reflect on something that Ollie said. Towards the start of his talk, I love this line. Ollie said, by setting our gaze on heaven, 
we can prayerfully begin to pull God's future into the present. And he had that line all throughout his talk, didn't he, about lifting our gaze, lifting our eyes up towards this amazing future that God has prepared for us. And I'm aware so many of us, we really need that hope right now. We really need that perspective in our lives when there's all kinds of stuff going on. So again, like we did at the start of the service, I want to invite us to a little physical response as a way of inviting God and asking God to help us to lift our eyes up towards this this glorious future and to meditate on it for a moment. So we'll start with our heads down, again, acknowledging and maybe even kind of bringing to God some of the ways that we have focused just on the life around us and maybe missed out or forgotten some of what Ollie spoke about and then we'll lift our heads up as a way of lifting our gaze like Ollie said and asking God to help us to do that not just today but throughout the week so uh, if you want to join me let's pray that together we start with our heads bowed and father we acknowledge that so often we focus only on the things of this world. Some of that, Lord, is our own fault and we bring that to you and we say that we're sorry. Some of it, God, is due to situations that distress us or that we can't control and we bring those to you and we ask for your help with them. Lord, as we bow our heads, we recognise how often, how quickly we look only to this world. But Father, keeping in mind what Oli said, now we lift our heads as a sign that we are saying, God, we want to lift our gaze to this glorious future. And as we do this, you might like to dwell on a particular thing from the passage or something Ollie said that uh, that jumps out to you today. Father, thank you for this glorious future and for a moment we just meditate on it. We lift our gaze to this hope that we've heard about today. And Father, would you help us to keep our eyes fixed on this hope, not just today in this short time, but throughout the week. And we have moments where our heads are bowed, as it were, Lord, would you lift our heads and help us to lift our gaze to this hope. In Jesus' name we ask for this. Amen. Amen. Well, Esther Jane and the band are going to lead us in a final song of worship.
We've come now to the end of our service. And let me just say, if you're new, if you're just tuning in to this HT online service and you haven't been before, or you haven't met many people before, please do head to the HT website and fill out the welcome form that you'll find there. It would be brilliant to be able to get in contact with you, whether it's online or in person, and link you up with others from the church if you'd like that. Well, let me end by asking for God's blessing over us. I'm going to use some words from Romans chapter 15. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great day and a great rest of your week. Thank you.